Hello again. Welcome to our our YouTube channel. We've got a little bit of technology here, so a little more, a little more high tech than we have in previous times. So welcome. You have reached First Baptist Church of Port Hope, Ontario. So, yep, this is our YouTube channel right here, and my name is Pastor Jeff Snow. Oh, sorry, uh, Pastor Jeff Snow from First Baptist Church in Port Hope, Ontario, and I am a Hab fan. Habs is Montreal Canadiens, but the hat you will always see is uh, because I'm still a hockey fan, even though we don't have a lot of hockey going on right now. Um, what are some of the things you come to your mind when you first think about uh, the presence of God, being in the presence of God, or when you think about Christianity in general? Sometimes the first thing people think is fear, fear being in God's presence. In the Old Testament, um, Whenever somebody encountered the awesome presence of God, their first reaction was, yikes, I'm going to die. This is not a good thing. Um, humanity being, you know, simply humans being in the awesome presence of God was a fearful thing for those in the Old Testament. And sometimes we think of God as someone to be feared. Sometimes we think of conviction to be in God's presence, and that could be a really good thing. It's, you know, God wants to fill us with his presence so that we can become convicted of the things that we're doing that are not the things that God created us to do, the things that hurt the sins, that hurt ourselves, hurt other people, hurt God. And he brings conviction to our hearts so that we can turn to him for forgiveness and change our ways. Now, unfortunately, sometimes people feel conviction and they misinterpret it as condemnation because they only go halfway. They feel the conviction, they kind of go, oh, man, I feel terrible about this. God must hate me. He's pointing his finger at me. He's condemning me. I don't, I don't want to be part of this. I don't want, I want God. But that's because people kind of stop and only go halfway. The conviction comes so that we can turn to God, turn away from the things that are ultimately destroying us, and begin to live a life in his presence all the time and walk with him. So sometimes there's fear we feel, sometimes there's conviction. Sometimes in God's presence we feel comfort. We just know that he's there, and that is a powerful and a good thing. Sometimes in, we associate God's presence and Christianity in general with, with something very serious, even something very somber. Not a lot of happiness, not a lot of smiles. <laughs> you know, you think that if you're going to be a Christian, God's going to take away all of our fun. Um, you know, we're not going to be able to do the things we really enjoy. So we associate it with, and you see that portrayed a lot in, in movies and television. Just um, religious people, Christians, often look like they were weaned on a lemon, you know, very sour looking. But I want to talk about something that is a big part of what it means to be a Christian, a big part of what God wants to birth into our lives, and that is. Joy. That is joy. Now, joy isn't quite the same as happiness. Um, they're different. I was reading a quote just before that talked about how joy is something that comes from within, whereas happiness is kind of dependent on what's going on around you. And we're facing some really difficult and challenging times right now. Some of us are just kind of rolling with it, and it's not getting too close to home. Others who have someone who is sick with COVID or someone who is losing their business because of what they're facing because of the shutdown and our students who just have had to uh, manage school online and can't find summer jobs. It's hard to find joy, you know, happiness maybe in a situation like this. But God wants to tell us that deep inside we can find joy, even in situations that don't make us happy. The Westminster Shorter Catechism. A catechism is something where, where they, over the history of the church, they've taken more complex spiritual truths and tried to whittle it down to some basic statements that we can remember easily that will explain to us um, truths of who God is and how he wants us to live. And the Westminster Shorter Catechism says this, the chief end of man or woman is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. The chief end of man or woman is to glorify God and enjoy him 
forever. Psalm 1611 is the scripture verse I want to begin with and focus on. And it says this in the King James Version, in your presence is fullness, fullness of joy. And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Psalm 1611. In your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Psalm 1611. Um, in Hebrews chapter 11, it kind of talks about um, pleasures in a different sense. It talks about the fleeting pleasures of sin or the pleasures of sin for a season as it talks about in, in the Old Testament. And I think sometimes we get this wrong impression about Christianity wanting to spoil all of our fun because if we're living in a world of sin, which is kind of like serving ourselves and seeking after our own desires and our own pleasure, um, that can be very powerful. And, and there is pleasure in doing things that are sinful, doing things that are wrong, doing things that, that God didn't create us to do. But those pleasures only last for a season. They only last for a short time. But sometimes they're so powerful that that's all that we can see. We get blinded to the big picture. Um, the whole idea of delayed gratification is something that kind of goes out the window. But that is something that, that God wants us to understand, that the true joy is something that is not fleeting. True joy is something that is deep. True joy is something that we can feel um, coming up from, not from what goes on around us, but something from the inside out. And God wants to give us in his presence a fullness of joy, something that's deep, something that's lasting, something that we can hold on to, a smile that comes from the inside out. And in that fullness of joy, the Bible says that we find strength. Nehemiah 10, um, 8, 10 says, the joy of the Lord is our strength. In this context, the, the people of Israel are hearing this, the word of God, the law of the Lord being read to them from first thing in the morning until noontime. And they are starting to, to grieve and feel sad over what they're hearing, what they're experiencing. And they're told by the prophet, no, this is time for rejoicing because the joy of the Lord is your strength. And this is not about um, denying sad circumstances. This is not about living in denial where it's like, ah, I'm happy, I'm happy that my leg is broken, you know, and just kind of denying the reality of our difficult circumstances. It, but rather it's about resting in God's faithfulness. It's about resting that God will be with us through it all. It's about resting in the promises that we find in God's word and finding joy in that and finding strength in that. And we rejoice in who God is. We experience the fullness of who he is more and more each day. And we can rejoice in that. And, that, um, that, and we, we understand who God is and that he's bigger than our circumstances. It helps us put our circumstances in perspective. Now that is not going to happen just like that. I think sometimes it takes time to, to understand more about God and to be able to see the reality of our circumstances in relationship, the bigness, the strength of our God. But when we are able to do that, we can find joy in knowing that he is watching over us and he's with us through difficult circumstances. And we do find joy in difficult circumstances because it we find that they are situations where we can grow and we can become the person that God created us to be. One of my favorite scripture passages from even going back as a teenager was James 1, 2, or 4. Count it all joy when you fall into difficult trials, difficult circumstances, because the trying of your faith will work patience and perseverance. But let perseverance have its perfect work, that you might be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. The testing of our faith builds perseverance, builds character, makes us mature, makes us complete. And that brings joy because in the middle of difficult circumstances, we can see the end picture and know that God is, has got a purpose for all these difficult things that are going on in my life. And he wants to build in me the character and the perseverance and the Christ-likeness that can only be built in facing difficult circumstances. I often think of the analogy of a kite. I didn't fly a kite much when I was younger, but my brother did. And um, I remember he had, a, he had a beach vacation one time in Old Orchard Beach, Maine, and he was flying his kite on the beach. 
thinking almost hit a couple of people when the kite came zooming down into the sky and the wind died. But in order for a kite to stay up, it needs the wind to go against it in order to, to hold it up. It can only soar when it's got um, adversarial circumstances of the wind going against it. And then it's the same with us. You know, we can only really soar and become the people that God created us to be through um, adversary, through adversarial times, through difficult circumstances, through, through challenges and through trials. And because of those trials are not just ends in themselves, uh, we can count it all joy because God wants to do something great in our lives. We can find joy in circum difficult circumstances through the hope that God gives us that this life is not all there is. And again, this is not about denying difficult circumstances. It's not about saying, okay, I'm going to put the whole world behind me and just become a hermit on a mountain and sit there and just wait for heaven. That's, that's not what God put us here for. But it's the joy that, that our hope is beyond what this life can offer. There is joy in the anticipation of what God has promised us in the future. It's kind of like as a kid at Christmas. You know, we, we, we have all experienced the joy that comes from anticipation. And if God has given us so much in this life of who he is, there's so much more waiting for us. And we can take joy in that anticipation. Let me read you a, a longer passage that comes from 1 Peter chapter 1, um, starting at verse 3. It says, Praise be to, the, be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. I met him for last week in Easter. And into an inheritance that can never perish or spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this, you greatly rejoice. We greatly rejoice at the living hope that we have in Christ's resurrection because he lives, I live now in the fullness of how God created me to live. And because he lives, I have hope for living with him eternally. I can rejoice in the inheritance kept for me, this passage says, in heaven. Look at the context. It says, in this, in all this you greatly rejoice, though now, for a little while, you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of troubles. Purpose. And then he goes on to say, these have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. This reiterates the James chapter 1 passage we read, where the purpose of trials is to prove our faith, to refine our faith, to show that it is genuine. And in faith, we trust in salvation through Jesus Christ. It goes on to say, through him, you have not seen him. Although, sorry, though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible, and glorious joy, for you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So we rejoice in the salvation that Christ offers us, that Christ gives us, that we are freed from the penalty of sin, free from the power of sin, and in heaven free from the presence of sin. We can rejoice in something eternal, that God has promised, promised us something that can never perish, never spoil, and never fade, and it's not fleeting. Not just for a season, it's forever. Philippians 4, 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. We can rejoice that in God's presence is fullness of joy. It's a joy that lasts and it's not fleeting. We can know that in God's presence that his joy is our strength and it's something that can take us through difficult times. We can rejoice that the trials that God allows us to go through the difficult times are what God uses to mold us into the person that God created us to be. And finally, we can rejoice in the hope of eternal life with Jesus. Because, and then we can experience forever the chief end of why we were created, to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. Let me pray with you. Lord, thank you for everyone who's watched this and listened to this. And thank you, Lord, for your word. And I thank you, Lord, for your joy. 
And right now, if we're watching this during the, the time of the COVID crisis and uh, the shutdown of so much in the economy, it can be hard to find joy, hard to find happiness. And I pray, Lord God, that you would help each one of us to spend time in your presence, to really allow you to fill and flood our hearts and our minds and our thoughts, and that in your presence we will find that fullness of joy, and that even in difficult times we will know that you are helping us to grow. You are helping us to become more like you. You are giving us the per perseverance we need. You are building your Christ-like character in us. Thank you, Lord, for the hope of the resurrection, giving abundant life now and, and eternal life forever. I just pray, Lord, that you would help us, anybody, um, help us always to be able to um, have the right perspective of who you are and how you want us to live, that you would not come to dampen our, our enjoyment of life, that you would come to give us life, give us joy. Give us joy to the full, something that lasts. Help us, Lord, to rest in that and to rejoice in you all. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May this week be a time that you will experience the presence of God and experience his fullness of joy, whatever you're going through. Have a good week, and we will see you next week. <laughs>